So, the House passed an assault weapons ban. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and we're going to talk about the assault weapons ban that has passed the House a few days ago and currently resides within the Senate. I didn't want to make a video about it right away because, you know, sometimes when you say stuff right away before you've had time to fully think about it, you can come off as an idiot. So hopefully I come off as less an idiot. So here are my thoughts on the assault weapons ban. The first one is, I can't believe they actually are going to try this. We currently live in the most divided America has probably ever been with the exception of the Civil War, like the actual shooting part of the Civil War, not the lead up to the Civil War, because I'd argue we're much more divided now than we were then. Furthermore, all of the extreme tyrannical measures that happened during the great sickness that we all just lived through have either been rolled back or shut down or made illegal or whatever. Furthermore, the ardor and love for the Second Amendment, and I mean like the fully automatic machine guns in vending machines kind of Second Amendment, is at its highest it has ever been probably since the Revolutionary War. And when I say it's highest, I mean both in intensity and dispersion. Uh, the people who are into the Second Amendment and into the rights of the Second Amendment are often all the way in. Yes, of course, you have your FUDs here and there. However, there is a, certainly a core group of people in America who value deeply the traditions of the Second Amendment, the right to self-defense, the right of the people to be equipped to win and fight wars, that kind of Second Amendment. So there is certainly that intensity there, which again, I don't think has been there since probably the American Revolution. Additionally, there's a dispersion of it. There are more people into the Second Amendment today than, again, like per capita wise, and there probably has been since the American Revolution. This is a result of the internet and YouTube videos and cool games like Call of Duty that get people interested into that. And then on top of that, you have these fantastic advocates out there like uh, Lucas from T-Rex Arms or Grantham who have kind of this, well, Grantham has humor, Lucas doesn't, but that's a different deal, uh, who have a humor or an insight or a way to make it relevant and important for people who may not have thought about it before, might not be interested, or maybe wanted a gun but don't really know what they're doing. And because of this explosion of accessible media, there has been a rapid growth, again, both in dispersion and intensity in the Second Amendment and the true full-throated meaning of the word, not just like, ooh, I like gun because it goes bang. So in light of that current America, the Democrats thought it would be a good idea to push through an assault weapons ban through the house. And not just any assault weapons ban, but a ban that probably outlaws, I don't know, 98, 99% of the guns and gun accessories that you own. And the more and more I've thought about this, I've just thought, where's this gonna go? Like, if I'm the one voting for an assault weapons ban, how do I think this is gonna go? What's the end state that they envision that's gonna end favorable in their circumstances. Now, I am going to assume they're not stupid and they are totally putting this through as a shill, which we'll get to in a second. But if that's not true, then they must be very, very stupid. They must think, oh, gee, people are just gonna turn these guns in. And of course, you can always find some token FUD who's gonna turn his guns in. That's probably gonna happen. The other option, of course, is people decide to not turn them in and keep them and hide them from you. And then you have the other option where people are not gonna turn them in, they may or may not hide them, and in order to get them, you're gonna have to send men with guns to take their guns, thereby resulting in gun violence, one way or another. Additionally, we just had the Supreme Court make one of the most pro-Second Amendment rulings it has in my entire lifetime, and certainly longer than that. The Supreme Court, when they struck down May Carey in New York, and thereby striking it down in all states, didn't just strike down May Carey like, hey, you can't do May Carey. They struck down May Carey and they said, you have to adhere to the text and the history and the tradition of the Second Amendment, and this doesn't do that. The reason that's a big deal, of course, is because that's gonna open up all kinds of other gun control laws that don't meet the history, text, and tradition standard. And let me tell you right now, there's quite a few. So in light of that backdrop, you think the strategic move, the really smart decision here, 
is to push through an assault weapons ban that barely passed the House. I think the vote was like 219 to 214. It was something like that. I mean, it was real, real close. And that, that's the time you think to pass an assault weapons ban. Furthermore, if you're some kind of Republican or conservative or GOP person and you voted for that, you must be triple level retarded. So I have a hard time believing that anyone is that stupid. Now granted, if you watch the hearings, to be fair, there are definitely some really, really stupid people in there who again could not explain to you the most base facts about firearms or how they operate or what they do uh, and made up all kinds of, I mean literally made up things to say to people about guns so that they could try to push this bill through. Attached here, it turns this weapon into an automatic weapon. This bumps, it becomes a bump stock. And so it will allow that to essentially be fired like an automatic weapon. That's so I certainly don't discount the fact that people are incredibly stupid. However, I think more than likely it's just a political move by the Democrats to say that, hey, look, we did something and we tried and try to find something to blame on the Republicans because they're losing desperately come the midterms. So they need to try to make some extreme moves in order to try something. The entire Biden administration has just been throwing it at the wall and seeing what sticks. That's been their entire governing policy for the past almost two years is just throw darts at the wall and see what sticks. Let's pass a ban here. Let's make a mask thing here. Let's make a vaccine mandate here. Let's say we have to have it on planes. Let's say you have to have it to get a job. Oh, whoop, never mind. Keep moving. That's been their entire governing policy is throwing darts. You're going to see it again with climate change very soon. So I'm honestly not even that upset. I'm really not that worried because the assault weapons ban will very shortly be on the dustbin of history if it even is able to pass the Senate. Now let's just say the worst case scenario happens and this assault weapons ban passes through the Senate. It gets to the president's desk and his wife holds his hand to forge a signature onto the document and it gets made law. And then it gets challenged in court and the Supreme Court upholds it as a right and true and good law that of course the government can make and of course it stays within the bounds of the Second Amendment or something or other. If all that were somehow to happen, and it comes down to you. Let me just tell you, you didn't lose shit. Do brave deeds and endure.